So Lucas, what is your favourite weapon in the Dead Space series? That's just got to be the plasma cutter, Carl. You're too fucking right, it's the plasma cutter. One gun, Lucas. One gun is all I need. Dead Space is a video game series all about shooting the limbs off of eldritch space horrors with mining equipment. AKA, it's fucking awesome. Louder for its oppressively tense atmosphere and unique take on the survival horror genre, the game was also responsible for some inter-office drama between the Dead Space crew and the people who made The Sims, exacerbated by some roughed up fruit. Okay Carl, let's just talk about Dead Space for a minute because that game yeah. is so good. Yeah, so for people who may not be familiar with the Dead Space series, it is exactly as I described in the introduction, a game where you shoot the limbs off of alien space monsters with mining <laughs> equipment, which is the greatest idea for a video game I have ever heard. It's like one of those things where when you hear it described, you go, yeah, that's great. That is like awesome. How is that not a thing that already exists? Yeah. And I fucking love Dead Space, by which I mean I love Dead Space 1 and 2 and tolerate Dead Space 3. <laughs> But I just want to quickly give a big shout out to the game's creator, Glenn Schofield, mm -hmm. um, because there's this amazing interview with him where he talks about, yeah, uh, there's a moment during production where the entire crew was yelling at me of, because of one moment I insisted upon putting in, because I said, this is the moment that's going to sell the game. And they were like, no, it's too difficult. And when I tell you the moment, Lucas, I guarantee you're going to have the exact same reaction that I did, which is, that was the right fucking choice, Mr. Schofield. And it is the moment where Isaac gets grabbed by the tentacle that comes out of the wall and drags you along. Oh, yeah. I, I could hear in your voice then you were thinking, going, yeah, that's absolutely correct. That is one of the strongest <laughs> moments in any survival horror game ever. It, apparently it was so difficult because uh, they had to completely change the way Isaac was animated for that one scene because oh they God. couldn't uh, account for what weapons you're going to be wielding. So you could be wielding any weapon in the game. Obviously you're lying on oh, your yeah. back, so you have to change every single animation. And according to Schofield, yeah, there was three other set pieces we had to cut from the game to like, direct manpower towards the animation for that one moment. And wow. I stand by it because it's the strongest moment in the entire fucking game. And it is, it's so terrifying. It really is. I, I, I remember in Dead Space 2, when spoilers, you go back to the Ishimura and you go past that technical hallway and I shit myself. <laughs> I got like PTSD Vietnam era flashbacks <laughs> to that moment of like, oh God, it's going to happen again. And then the character has the same flashback and it's like, oh God, no, even Isaac. Yeah, he does, yeah. God, that game's so good. The Dead Space series, or at least the first two games, the primary gameplay hook is the idea of strategic dismemberment. It was a, like a pretty revolutionary mechanic at the time of, yeah. oh, well, every single game is just shoot them in the head. Or and Dead Space said no to that. Yes. Dead Space said, shoot off like their arms and their legs to try and stagger their movements and kill them that way, rather than if you go for the head, Either it won't kill them, or sometimes it will make them stronger. Yeah, like shooting the enemy in the head is the exact opposite of what you're supposed to do, and that's yeah. why you have to fight the enemy with mining equipment. Because mining equipment, at least in the Dead Space universe, it's set in the future, is designed to pulverise rock. Um, so yeah, it's pretty effective against just um, disease-riddled alien necromorph flesh. But because the game had this rather revolutionary feature of strategic dismemberment, that called for some rather, shall we say, unique foley work to be undertaken. Carl, can you just clarify for like me and the audience what foley work is? Oh yeah, um, foley work is the art of putting sound effects um, into movies, TV shows and games. Uh, okay. Because fun fact, people who may not know, virtually every sound effect you hear in a movie or a TV show um, is created after the fact. The only thing they capture on the day of filming is the voices of the actors. Literally everything else is inserted after the fact, or at least it is on um, projects where they've got the money to do that. And when mm -hmm. I say everything, I mean stuff as simple as the ruffle of clothing, footsteps, the sound of a glass <laughs> being put down on a table. Because you don't want that, like, picking up on the microphones used to capture the audio for the voice. Mm -hmm. Because you want the voice to be as clear as possible. So yeah, they usually, like, come up with really weird and creative ways to make these sound effects. And do you have any favourite stories about that? Yeah, the one that I've heard is that um, the sound for the TARDIS mm -hmm. is running like keys along piano wires. Oh, okay.
That's similar how to, to how they do the Godzilla Raw, which is um, a resin covered leather glove being dragged along um, a bass, guitars, strings. And then you've got um, uh, Star Wars, where I believe the lightsaber was a, the sound of a microphone being passed over an electrical cable. And it was the, inter <laughs> it was the interference caused by the wow. That's so wow. cool. Wow. And then they use that for the Star Wars lightsaber noise. And as an additional bonus fact, because I found this out recently and it's hilarious, there is a pervasive problem when making Star Wars related media that all of the actors keep making sound effects with their mouths. <laughs> and they have to cut, and they have to edit the noises out because they pick up on the microphone because that's the only thing the microphones pick up. So like, there's all this behind the scenes footage of Ewan McGregor with his lights like wow wow. It's like Ewan, you don't have to do that. Oh, oh, my dad's calling me. All right, here we go. We ready? Hey, Dad, what's up? Hey, I'm Sonny. How big lad? Yeah, I'm not doing too bad. How's you? Just working at the moment. Um. I'm good, are you? I'm wondering if you're around, like, it's about four-ish. Uh, yeah, I can be. If you want to meet up for a coffee or something. Got to maintain... Well, social yeah. distance, though. That's the important thing. Yeah, well, certainly social distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, big lad. See right. you later, son. Right, see you a bit, yeah, Dad. Bye. Love you. Bye. 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 Love you, bye. Oh, Is that the most northern man you've ever heard? <laughs> yes, every Just... time. Hey, hey up, son. How are you doing? Anyway, yeah, dead space. Let's bring it back to that. Um, as you might imagine, with all the stuff the game lets you do, like violently dismembering alien space creatures. Um, they couldn't mm -hmm. just use stock sound effects and in fact had to make a lot of them in-house, uh, which resulted mm -hmm. in a lot of pulverized fruit and vegetables. Uh, for people who don't know, it is a common thing in the industry um, to use fruit and vegetables to make sound effects um, for things like broken bones, flesh being torn and destroyed. And you might be thinking that sounds stupid, but it works. And that's what, used, that's what they use for a lot of dead space. If you think about it, like, oh, we want the sound, like, what's, like, one of the most iconic things in Dead Space. It's like Isaac Clarke's 10-ton size 19 Space Jordans going down at Mach 3 onto the top of a Necromorph head. And you get that, like, that really satisfying squishy crunch. Like, it sounds really, like, squidgy and crunchy, and they make that noise by just grabbing pieces of fruit and vegetables, usually, like, watermelons and stuff, and just smushing them with heavy objects. Yeah. Because the sound is quite comparable, and it's the same with like broken bones. If you want to make the sound of a broken bone, you can just crack um, something like a carrot, like a very like, um, fresh raw carrot. Mm -hmm. And you might think well, that doesn't sound accurate, because it does after you like you know you put it through a couple of um, filters. And that's what they did for almost all of the sound effects of the necromorphs being destroyed in Dead Space. And it's just like that was some people's day at work for several weeks while they were creating the sound effects. So just come into a sound booth and just absolutely destroy the shit out of all this fruit and veg. Just get your Gallagher on and just like <laughs> sledgehammer these watermelons to create the sound effects. That sounds amazing. At the same time, Lucas, it also sounds a little bit messy, yes? <laughs> yeah, very messy. And I should point out that the Dead Space officers um, were shared um, with other people working on EA games, including the people who made The Sims, who also had to use those sound booths. And as you oh, might no. imagine, they weren't very happy when they go into the sound booths to record like noises for The Sims and just found um, chunks of like gone off fetid vegetables and fruit just Ooh. seeped into almost every part of the room because uh, the Dead Space guys, they tried to clean up stuff as best they could, but evidently didn't do a very good job, which resulted in a lot of rotten fruit and vegetables just being all over that room, um, resulting in the sound booth smelling like shit. And as if that doesn't sound bad enough, um, it's also worth pointing out that to get um, the sound of necromorphs uh, crawling around in air ducts. You know that noise when you mm -hmm. just, like, the ambient noises of necromorphs in the walls? Mm -hmm. uh, they recorded that um, by putting interns into dumpsters and asking them to just claw and bang and scream. Oh no! And like the interns work for all of the officers. So as you imagine, in, then you had interns walking around who smelled like dumpsters. <laughs> And according to the lead sound designer on Dead Space, after a while, the guys making The Sims got so pissed off, they just hired a cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> because they were like so sick of walking into the recording booth. It's like, it's full of destroyed watermelons again. Oh, God. <laughs> Why you need so many melons? And <laughs> I'm just going to say, it was totally fucking worth it because Dead Space was boss. But yeah, that probably would annoy me. So the topic of today's video in a roundabout way was the sound effects of Dead Space. And one mm -hmm. that I singled out was just the sound of Isaac Clarke slamming those size 19 Space Jordans down on a Necromorph head, which I contend <laughs> is one of the greatest 
uh, feeling things in a video game ever. And I want to use that as a jumping off point to give a special shout out to the voice actor for Isaac Clarke, who had no lines in the first game except grunts <laughs> and screams. But all of those grunts and screams are fucking amazing. Because you, you can hear the amount of force that Isaac is putting into each of those stomps based on those screams, can't you? Just the... Rah! Rah! It's, like, Rah! it's so good. <laughs> God damn it. And in Dead Space 2, he does talk, but something I found out in a, a recent replaying of the game is that if you keep mashing the stomp button, as people I want to do when they get pissed off yeah. by a necromorph, um, Isaac will just start screaming and telling the necromorph to fuck off. <laughs> but he's like, fuck you! With every stomp, it's... Oh, that's so good! Because I think that's an underrated aspect of voice acting. So when you see um, awards being given, it's like, oh, the guy who did the voice of Arthur Morgan in Red mm -hmm. Dead. It's like, yeah, he did a really good job emoting. But at the same time, like, put some respect on the people who just scream. Like the voice <laughs> actor for Isaac Clarke, when he came into the recording studio, it's just scream real loud. Pretend that you're wearing the most sick, awesome space suit you've ever seen and you're stomping on an alien. And he's like, got it. One of my favourite lines in all of video games um, is right at the end of that game when Isaac Clarke just says, fuck you and fuck your marker. Because it, you can just hear, you can hear the frustration in Isaac's voice. Like he's so yeah. done with the necromorph shit. He's like, fuck you, I'm done. And you just like yeah. open fire on just these ghost ro like aliens. And it's <laughs> sick. It's so good. God damn it, I trusted you. Fuck you. And fuck you. So good. Just fuck you and fuck your markers. Ah! Just open fire <laughs> like a madman. I love it. It's great. And um, I, I'm going to sorry, Lucas, but I have to talk about Devil May Cry 5 just for like a oh, screen. Okay. And it is a spoiler, but the game's been out for a long time now. Mm -hmm. And it is right at the end, the final fight. You're fighting Virgil. Spoilers. He's in the fucking trailer. So like, and you're fighting Virgil as Nero. And Nero just finds out that, spoilers, Virgil's his dad. Who would have thunk it? They've got the exact same fucking haircut. <laughs> the only people in that universe with white hair, but whatever. And for that, the, fact, the first time you do the final fight, um, you get your devil trigger, and your devil trigger is just constantly filling back up. And the oh, very so first cool. time in that fight scene that you activate devil trigger, and it only happens on the first playthrough, um, Nero gives a middle finger and says, fuck you, as the camera zooms in, and he turns into his devil form. Fuck you! And the first time that happened, I lost my fucking shit. When it's like, oh, you can activate Devil Trigger. And it zooms right in on Nero. It's like, fuck you! As he just like gives this middle finger to his dad. Like the literal fuck you, dad, I'm not listening moment. <laughs> and then the reason I love that is because the moment is so good. Before that, they're playing this like really nice orchestral music. It's like, oh, that's Virgil's mm. theme song. And when you activate Devil Trigger, they start playing a dance remix of Devil Trigger. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like your theme song starts playing. It's like, fuck you, Dad, I'm not listening to your shitty classical music. Put on my trance call. Let's go. 